Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how you can make Elon Bradley line of Logix 5000 controllers like uh, PLC like uh, Logix, Control Logix, uh, Compact Logix, Flex Logix, Soft Logix and Drive Logix communicate with a third party device. Uh, to demonstrate that, let's uh, launch Studio 5000 and what we'll do is that we'll create a blank project. A blank new brand new project and let's say I'm just gonna use compact logic for demonstration just gonna choose this family of compact logics and just give it a name and it's gonna land in a desktop doesn't matter which revision you choose no password protection and finish we will be demonstrating a third-party device connection using uh, this device called agromac uh, the model number is 951EN-6012. It's got four analog inputs, uh, two process current outputs. This is AO and a couple of digital outputs. It does have uh, digital input as well, but I'll show you where they will all come in play. So let's get started here. So this is a project. I'm going to minimize the rest of the branches so that it will not, be, it will not cause confusion. So I'm also going to open a controller tag. And you will see how the third party tags will come in here as soon as I add them. So the location that you'll be adding a third party device will be the Ethernet here. So I'm going to click Ethernet, right click here, and new module. When it pops up, the select module type. On the select on the search section here, the filter, you will type Ethernet module. Ethernet module. And it comes up here. You can search for it if you want, but this is the fastest way. Double click on generic Ethernet module, it'll pop up a window for you to configure your Ethernet module. So this is over this section here, the name is the name of the tag that you'll be using throughout the program and will appear as part of a controller tag for the uh, Alan Bradley uh, PLC program there in Studio 5000. So I'm just going to call it Egg uh, Crow Mag, right? Um, just going to give that name. And just going to be some description or IP description for third party device. On this section here, this is a connection parameter. These are very particularly uh, custom to every different uh, third party device. So on AgroMac, if you look at the application note, um, this was provided to me by uh, the guys from AgroMac. This is their configuration. So the device that we are configuring today is 95EN6012. So if you eyeball here, right across here, 951, uh, it could be one or two EN6012. Uh, the COM format is uh, that int, data D int. And then your input assembly, your input here, you need to enter 100 and the size is five. Output is 112 and the size is 9. I'm going to go ahead and enter here 105. Output will be from 112, size 9. So just to validate, go back in there. This is the line that we're looking at 105, 112, 9. And the configuration uh, it starts from 128 size 0. 128 size 0. As you can see, uh, for any third party Ethernet IP device, these are very customized. So you will have to get this uh, sort of a lookup chart or a table from your vendor. Uh, this table is only valid for uh, this device, uh, it, it will vary or change from device to device. So uh, in this one here, you'll give IP address of that AgroMac meter. I'm just going to give a random number here uh, because it does have, if you look at the device here, it does have an Ethernet jack that you can communicate to this via Ethernet IP protocol. So once I hit OK, what's going to happen is that it's going to create uh, three different tags, input, output, and configuration, which aligns with this and the size. OK, All right, let's move this aside. Input, output, and configuration. I just want to touch base a bit here. Uh, this is where you started from. Connection. 
if if you are dropping if your comps are dropping increase this by another 10 milliseconds or maybe another 20 milliseconds uh, this will help with your comps um, and the modules is and everything about the modules but we're not live so it's not showing here so I'm gonna expand this guy here and talk a bit about the input and output in particular to this agromac uh, module here again going back in here I did say that it has four analog inputs and two AOs but you can see that uh, over here in the array it's got zero to four which means altogether it's got five uh, inputs and nine outputs how is it divvy up so I spoke to a technical support team there and this is what they told me this is their data map let me move this away so that you can actually see it see the data type okay here so uh, starting with array uh, element 0 is your discrete inputs so it goes from 0 to 31 which is 32 uh, 32 bits altogether right um, the first uh, so this one has eight digital input I think so it goes from 0 to 7 is what they use or what you have to look out for so that's your digital input that's how you get for this device and element 1 to 4 is your analog input uh, this uh, unit polar unipolar uh, counts so it goes from 0 to 20,000 exactly like uh, Ellen Bradley's uh, AI module right so it goes from 0 to 20,000 and as for the analog as for the output here right um, array elements 0 and 1 the analog input 0 and 1 again analog output uh, they are unipolar as well it goes from 0 to 20,000 so if you if you have like a valve opening from 0 to 100 percent you're gonna have to scale it to 0 to uh, 20,000 that's what I mean by that is a raw signal that you are reading or writing to array element number two is your discrete output again uh, goes from 0 to 31 uh, bits the first uh, this is a uh, uh, six uh, sourcing so it's got uh, six uh, digital input outputs I'm sorry so uh, digital, six digital outputs so the zero to five is what you're going to be writing to in order to uh, output the value there uh, on the bring the screen up here and number three three all the way to eight they are uh, more for configuring your device so element number three if you put in a hex value of say uh, 5e2a right it unlocks the device and allows for calibration so uh, you can actually change your unipolar value from 0 to 20,000 to 0 to 100 right you saw your 0 will be 0 and your span will be 100 or if you want to change it to minus 5 to minus plus 5 you'll be 0 will be minus 5 and your span will be 0 so this is a span not the final value uh, same thing for analog output right so basically element 3 is your trigger um, and number 6 is reserve I'm not too sure exactly what they use it for but anyway the whole idea of this is not advertising this agrometer the whole idea of the third-party device is that uh, all these devices are very customized for the third-party device you have to be you if they are hidden like that you have to find out from the vendor how they are distributed and how they are set up so this this is what I got from my vendor and my supplier right so uh, and you also have to be able to configure your uh, assembly input and output and the size in order to get that thing done and once you're ready uh, write your program in order to access it um, you probably know if you have done a program in in uh, in Alan Bradley before uh, you just so I'm gonna just gonna create a shunt drop it in here call it acro meter C dot data dot say input I can't remember what the tag is but input agro meter I not C I data say zero dot one 
and then you want to trigger an out. Output would be uh, dot say one like that. That's how you'll be using your uh, algorithm here to write read and write it back. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, have a good day. Bye.